Hi, welcome back to my channel. You know, it's been a minute since we've checked in with our friends Dumbass Peckerwood and Prince Pete Davidson, and I think it's about time we see what's going on there. I'm gonna say it now so that there aren't any comments about it. I promise I'm not gonna forget about this series. I, I will step away from it for months at a time, but I promise that I will continue till we get to the end of the story. You have my word, Scout's honor, etc., etc. There might be hiatuses, but like not even hiatus there's just like there's other things i want to talk about on my youtube channel what's happened with pete davidson so far since the last episode he left snl he's no longer dating kim kardashian he was in bodies 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 which i enjoyed i thought it was a good movie yeah let me just like google pete davidson oh yeah he was like maybe gonna go to space and then he's not gonna go to space anymore he's in a new comedy series with joe pesci kim kardashian makes a shocking sex confession about pete davidson on the kardashians streaming now on hulu and so we had sex in front of the fireplace in honor of you yeah you heard that right kim kardashian reveals she had sex with pete davidson in honor of her grandma oh I'll be honest, that was not the shocking, what is it, shocking sex confession I was expecting from Entertainment Tonight. You know, it's so crazy. Pete and I were staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel last weekend, and we were sitting in front of the fireplace just talking for hours, and I was like, my grandma told me that you really live life when you have sex in front of the fireplace. And so we had sex in front of the fireplace in honor of you. My grandma told me a good place to have sex. And so then when I had sex at that place, I thought about my grandma. That makes a lot of sense. Who would have guessed that context makes a seemingly outrageous claim less so? Time to get to the real Pete Davidson. Oh yeah, also, if you're if you're just stepping in now, joining us here in episode six, um, I like your style. I, I really do. Uh, you can go back and watch the previous episodes or... Uh, basically all you need to know is that I'm courting a prince. My name is Dumbass. The prince's name is Pete Davidson. There's a whole cast of wacky characters. You'll, you'll pick up on the relationships pretty quickly because th these characters aren't so much people as they are caricatures of people. Like, it's very clear what purpose they serve in the story and blah, 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 blah. So I think if you're just joining us now, I like your style and I think you'll pick up on what's going on pretty quickly. The Royal Romance never gets old chapter 11 the apple of his eye a couple weeks later you're in a limo with bertrand and maxwell on your way to the cordonian countryside waking from a nice nap you stretch your arms out and yawn i hate to be cliche but are we there yet almost dumbass believe me i'm as excited as you to get out of this car especially since we're going to applewood is that really the name of the royal family's country manor everything in cordonia has been so grand but that's quaint it's decidedly appropriate applewood manor borders the largest apple orchard in the entire kingdom and that's where they first cultivated the apple variant cordonia is most famous for this famous apple is called the cordonian ruby very good you've been paying attention thank god the cordonian ruby is a red varietal that's pleasantly crisp with an intense flavor that has notes of honeyed caramel you know that's probably the most poetic thing you've ever said certain subjects call for a little poetry like apples obviously precisely now, let us review your role this weekend in earnest. In earnest? You make it sound like I need to step up my game. Oh, you do. Since the king's announced his retirement, everything has changed. Yeah, the king's stepping down. And that means that Pete Davidson is going to ascend to the throne much quicker than we previously thought. Oh, yeah. Also, the queen died. <laughs> you would think maybe instead of getting another monarch who's about as old as the one who just passed away was... You'd think they'd go, hmm, maybe one of these youngsters should be the new king, but no, 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 no. I guess the announcement was pretty serious, huh? I saw King Constantine talking to Pete Davidson about it at the beach party. Really? What do you know about it? Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, really, I know nothing. The king dismissed me before they talked. I had to walk away and I haven't talked to Pete since then. Actually, I haven't seen him around much lately. He's probably busy with preparations for the coronation. That's precisely the reason we need to make a more concerted effort. We're no longer playing for the title of princess. If dumbass marries him, she will be queen. The stakes are higher than ever. We must succeed. Bertrand, uh, you know that I actually care about the prince, right? We have a relationship. If he chooses me, it'll be because he cares for me and I care for him. That's good. Use that. Let your sentimental heart fuel your competitive spirit. Bertrand, I'm merely preparing you. The other ladies are only going to be more competitive. And if you do care about him, then you'll get serious. Well, 
That I can agree to. We're running out of time after all. There's only about a month and a half before the coronation ball at the end of the season. Time flies when you're jet setting around Cordonia. So what do I need to do? What are my directives for the day? No time to play coy. Spend as much time as possible with Pete Davidson. But if you can't do that, try not to get into trouble. According to my research, you, Duchess Olivia, and Countess Madeline are the front runners. But Pete Davidson and I have a special connection. His Royal Highness isn't the only one that matters. Olivia and Madeline may not be the foremost in the prince's heart, but they are popular with other royals, the nobles, and the public. They're both going to try to undermine you. Olivia's been trying that since the beginning, but I've stood my ground. I don't know that much about Madeline. Her mother is Cordonian nobility, which is where she gets her title of Countess. Oh, her first name is not Countess? And she's practically royalty on her father's side as well. Her family is powerful, and she's grown up immersed in intrigues and maneuverings of courtly life. Don't underestimate her. She's used to winning. Anyway, you won't be able to avoid either lady in public, but try your best to keep your cool and be diplomatic, especially when the press is around. You've done remarkably well so far, but there's still room to fail. You nod. As the limo makes a turn and begins to slow down. We're here! So that felt like as good a recap as anything. Exiting the limo, you step onto the sprawling estate of Applewood Manor. A large stone manor stands elegantly amidst manicured gardens and beyond it, vibrant fields of grass and trees stretch out before you. Beautiful. I can get used to this. This is Applewood. It's where we'll be staying for the next few weeks. Maxwell grabs your bags from the limo and walks with you down the long packed dirt driveway leading to the manor. Oh, packed dirt driveway. That was... Too many words for my brain. Now, we should settle in quickly. The Apple Blossom Festival will last today and tomorrow, and the first kickoff event is starting this afternoon. Delicious ones, apple picking, apple pie baking, apple tree planting. We Cordonians take our traditions very seriously. Be sure to show enthusiasm for all the events. That starts with finding something suitable to wear. Nothing too flashy, just something that says you're relatable and quaint. All right, what are my options? Oh, boho beautiful. Anything else? basic look. All right, if this doesn't say day in the countryside, I don't know what does. I feel like every line or like every other line in this is, you know, when people joke on Marvel movies when they go, uh, he's right behind me, isn't he? I feel like that's the level of writing we're dealing with all the time here. At the apple orchards, you are escorted past a crowd of people eagerly awaiting the beginning of the Apple Blossom Festival. All the ladies vying for Pete Davidson's hand stand in a loose semicircle under the shade of a large apple tree. You join them, squeezing into the only empty space between Olivia and Madeline. Those are the two, the two bad guys. Shouldn't you be in the back somewhere with Drake and the other commoner? Shh, it's starting. Your attention goes to the king and queen standing in the center, proudly smiling near several wicker baskets full of brilliant red apples. The press throngs around you, quieting as the king raises his arms. Welcome to the annual Apple Blossom Festival. As is tradition, myself and several ladies of the court will sample the apples of the first picking of the season. The queen gestures and the apples are distributed to the suitors. You take yours, cupping it in your hands. It's so red. It really is like a ruby. Looks delicious. Oh, it is. I can't wait for you both to try it. You know, I actually look forward to this every year. Ladies, if you will, please try your apples. One of the reporters edges closer with a cameraman. Make sure you look over here. We'd love some reaction shots. And a shot of that ensemble lady dumbass. Ruffles are on trend for this summer's lineup. It's perfect. Thanks. The ladies taste their apples. Oh, delicious. As refreshing as a summer breeze. You take a big bite of your apple, only to have your mouth filled with a sharp, nauseating mix of bitter and sour tastes. Oh, I should swallow and smile. Fighting back a grimace, you swallow the apple and put a smile on your face as the cameras click. Looks like you enjoy the Cordonian Ruby, lady dumbass. It certainly has character. I wasn't expecting such a sour taste. The first crop of the season always has a particular bite to it. I rather like the taste personally. You would. The king clears his throat, calling everyone to attention. It looks like our ladies enjoy their apples. I'd like to extend a special thanks to our apple growers and farmers for preserving our noble tradition. And with that, happy apple blossom festival. The crowd cheers and people start dispersing into the orchard to pick apples. You're about to join them, but the reporters rush forward, trapping you with Olivia and Madeline. Would it be all right if I asked you ladies a few questions? Of course. Fidelia always has generously supported the CBC. We look forward to your favorable report. Oh, I look forward to your favorable report. And I haven't forgotten the amazing article about the Never Kiss family history and trend several years back. Your family has always been as fashionable as it is noble. Well, Mr. Brian, Ms. DeLuca, I don't have a history with the CBC or trend, but I can promise you a compelling story. The prince and I are close. I've seen a side of him that he doesn't often show in public. Wouldn't you want to hear about that? Tren would be interested in Lady Dumbass's insights as someone on the inside. Lady Dumbass makes an excellent point, and I'd like to remind everyone that we all have a relationship with the prince that could provide a unique spin. Yes, I've been Pete Davidson's friend since childhood. And I myself am close to the prince and have the pleasure of calling the queen my friend. Now, any other questions? Just one last one. You've been at court enjoying all the events the social season has to offer, competing for the prince's attention. 
At this stage, who do you think the prince will choose? I think he's gonna pick whoever makes the best queen. Uh, the prince is loyal and dedicated, he'll do what's best for the country and the people. But you're still wishing it'll be you? With everything in me, but I know Prince Pete Davidson will do what's right. And I'm trying to be worthy of being his choice. Can I quote you on that? Of course. Very well put, lady dumbass. Really? Yes. I know I find the prince's devotion to cause and country inspiring. As do we all, Lady Madeline. That's it for questions. The reporters walk off. Olivia glares at you while Madeline considers you thoughtfully. That it was informative. Lady dumbass, you answered with such grace and poise. It was rather enviable. I only hope you can keep it up without any mishaps. Some women can't handle the pressure. Is she gonna do a turn where she starts being real mean to me? I can. As can I. If either of you think you've won, you've got another thing coming. Oh, Olivia dear, I think we all know where we stand. May the best woman win. She walks off. Olivia shakes her head and stalks in the opposite direction. You find Maxwell and Bertrand on the sidelines. You did well up there with the press. Madeline didn't shake you. Yeah, but I'm beginning to see what you mean. She spun everything positively for herself. Still, this gives me hope. Also, thanks for not giving me a heads up about the apple. You said it would taste like caramel. I said it had an intense flavor. Besides, if you can't handle something as simple as a sour apple, I shudder to think how you'll crumble when presented with a real challenge. <laughs> Whatever. So what happens now? Right now I suggest you two go down this path and enjoy a stroll through the royal gardens. I have it on good authority that the prince is there now. I'll catch up with you later. You and Maxwell head towards the gardens when you hear Bertrand's voice sounding agitated. You turn around and see Bertrand standing with a familiar figure. Anna, you're being unreasonable. Not the way I see it. Bertrand turns angrily and storms off. You whisper to Maxwell. Looks like something's up. Any idea what's going on? Not really. Bertrand doesn't let me get involved with House Boom on stuff. He thinks I'll just screw it up. That's not fair, Maxwell. I kind of see his point. I am kind of a screw up. No, don't let Bertrand get to you. You're as much a member of House Boom on as he is. It does look like things didn't go well with that reporter. Maybe I could help, but wait, I don't want to distract you. We're supposed to be going to find the prince. This choice will unlock a special scene with the reporter and a flashback that lets you play as Maxwell? Yo, yeah, I'll be my boy Maxwell. You really think we should do it? He's your brother. I know you want to help him if we can. Thanks for coming with me, dumbass. I hate awkward situations. You and Maxwell approach the porter as she turns to you. Lady dumbass, what a surprise. Did you want to add to your earlier comments? Yes, Ms. DeLuca. I'm actually here with my friend Maxwell. We wanted to, yeah, let's let's just go in. We want to see if you'd be willing to share some information with us. Straight to the point, I like that. First off, if we're talking off the record, just call me Anna. Okay, Anna. I wanted to ask, what were you and Bertrand arguing about? Bertrand's always been very concerned with how the world sees him and his house. Let's just say that my view of what's currently going on didn't exactly match with the image he wants the world to see. So you know that we're broke? Not to put too fine a point on it, but yes. What happens to the Boomaw house is Cordonian news. We're not really that important. <laughs> do I have those sunglasses near me? Oh, I do. All right. Well, I guess I know what I'm doing for Anna DeLuca's lines. Bertrand made House Boomaw important. He catapulted your family name into the spotlight. Good or bad, Cordonia wants to know what's happening with you. I happen to think they deserve the truth. But Bertrand doesn't see it that way. He was furious. I'm not sure Bertrand knows how to smile, even on a good day. Ha! Huh. You should have seen him back in the day. What's that supposed to mean? Bertrand was the life of the party. And usually, it was his party. I don't think there was a day of the week when he didn't have some sort of social engagement worthy of royalty. Well, so, are you going to run a story about my brother? Yes. Think you could spare him? Look, I don't appreciate Bertrand's way of going about things. If he thinks he can intimidate me, he's got another thing coming. But we're not trying to intimidate you, we're practically begging you. True. Please, it would ruin our house's reputation. Nonsense. People love a good riches to rags story even more than a rags to riches one. If anything, it would make the people love you. Actually, people would pity them. Perhaps. But is there anything wrong with pity? There is to Bertrand. It would kill him. I suppose it would, wouldn't it? Okay, you've made your point. I'll delay my story to the end of the social season. Thank you. Now, I really must be going. It was interesting talking to you two. Anna DeLuca leaves. And Maxwell turns to you. Thanks for coming with me to talk to her. I'm really glad we did. It's always strange to hear people talk about the way things used to be. Was Bertrand really so different? Oh, you have no idea. Let me tell you about the New Year's Eve party he threw six years ago. Whoa, flashback, flashback, flashback. Six years ago, no one knew a pandemic was coming. People were thinking Hill Dog was gonna be the president. Six years ago, what else happened in 2016? There's some good music that came out in 2016 but there's there's one major event that happened in 2016 that's kind of sticking out in my brain that's clouding the rest of the things that occurred that year Obama. 
Eve. It's New Year's Eve, and the crowd of guests have gathered at the Grand Staircase for a toast at midnight. More champagne! You can't have a toast without champagne. Hold on a sec. I saw something cool on the internet. Give me that bottle. You take the bottle of champagne out of Burton's hands and grab a sword off the wall. Like in bodies, bodies, body. Maxwell, that sword is over 100 years old. And so is that champagne. Neither's getting any younger. So let's have at it. Here, here. Let's have it. Yeah, don't make us wait all day. Be careful. In one smooth swing, you lop the top off the champagne bottle. It sparkles and bubbles as the crowd applauds. Here's to the party of the century. No. No? We toast to my brother, who makes any party he's at the party of the century. Woohoo! Come on, everybody. Come on. We need a proper... New Year's Eve toast from the hosts. Quite right you are, Olivia. Maxwell, would you join me in doing the honors? You and Bertrand step up on the stairs, arm in arm. Friends, nobles, courtly guests, members of the elite, and whoever else managed to sneak in here tonight. <laughs> Let me begin in saying, it's your great honor being here. And my great honor as well, because any party that Bertrand hosts is surely to be an epic night to remember. Were any of you here for the one with all the llamas? because that was crazy. Even that night will be nothing compared to tonight. After all, what's the point of having a party if you can't make it even bigger and better than the last? Are we gonna do cocaine? I feel like that's the only natural progression given the people who are here. We're gonna do coke in choices, and that's great. The crowd cheers. As the noise dies down, the clock begins to strike midnight. It's the new year. In conclusion, cheers to, let's give it up for Bertrand, huh? The party animal. Maxwell, you're too kind to me. Cheers! cheers. <laughs> Why don't they just make all the characters say cheers at the same time? Cheers! <laughs> and Happy New Year! That was the flashback? That was it? Back in the present day, you see the smile fade from Maxwell's face. And that's how things were. Wow, I can't believe Bertrand was actually like that. Yeah, but enough about that. We've got to get you to your prince. A little while later, you arrive at the gardens. Everyone from the court strolls among the beautiful flower beds. You look around. Where's Pete Davidson? I don't see him. He's been a little off since the regatta. Well, Bertrand said he was here. I'll look around. While Maxwell wanders off, you notice there's an exhibit closed sign on the gazebo. You sneak into the gazebo. You walk through a big open archway. Ah, oh, and everyone can still see you because it's a gazebo. And there you find Pete Davidson looking contemplatively at a still pond of golden fish. Pete Davidson? Dumbass. I, is something wrong? No, it's just, it's nothing. Never mind. Pete Davidson, I can tell something is bothering you. What is it? Dumbass, can I ask you something? Of course. Do you think you could handle being queen of Cordonia? Truly? I haven't spent as much time at court as some of the other ladies, but I'd like to think I could do a good job. Is that what's been on your mind recently? That's part of it. But as for the rest, I... <sighs> not something I can talk about with anyone, but trust me, if I could, you'd be the one I want to tell. You reach out and touch his arm. He leans into you for a brief moment, embracing you tightly. Honestly, I'll be fine. Anyway, it's just boring royal business, not worth troubling you about in any case. Well, then maybe I can join you in the gardens. You and the prince walk away from the gazebo and wind your way through the flowers. I've always loved the view here. It's nice. It's magical. I've never seen so many apple blossoms. The festival is a special time of year for this garden. I could stay here all day, but, but I have plans to meet Drake. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're welcome to come with me. He'd probably be happy to see you. He sort of dreads this day every year. He hates apples? Not quite. Today is Drake's birthday. Oh, well, figures he'd try to keep it a secret. Yes, he'd actually actually probably be furious if he knew that I told you. He usually spends the day hiding out in his room. Sometimes I'm able to convince him to have a drink with me, but that's about as far as it goes. As you walk through the garden, you see Drake, Hannah, and Maxwell. Drake! Why do you look so happy to see me? Oh no, God no. Yep, happy birthday. Pete Davidson, you told her? My diva's apologies, Drake. I forgot that it was such a closely guarded secret. It's fine. It doesn't matter because this is the last we're ever going to speak of it ever again. You don't want to do something fun on your birthday? Even I was allowed petite fours. I'm sure that that's French and I'm saying it wrong. And an hour playing with my father's cat every year. A small bite-sized confectionery or savory appetizer. The name is French, meaning small oven. Man, Drake, even Hannah feels bad for you. And she's poor. I don't need fun to enjoy myself. Besides, what could you jokers possibly want to do that would be fun for me? Are all Americans as fussy as Drake is about birthdays, dumbass? Drake's an American? Half on my mother's side. He's like... That gives me an idea. Do you have any American Western themed bars here in Cordonia? How about that, Drake? Whiskey, mechanical bull riding, and some good old American fun. I guess that doesn't sound horrible. 
but I can't ask for you guys to sneak out like that. Nonsense, I'd love to. And I'd also like to understand more of dumbass's American culture. And I'll take any excuse to drink and dance the night away. Plus, I just found the perfect place. I don't know, do you really want to do this, dumbass? I almost think we have to go with the outfit she's got on. I say, we're going out tonight. Bye. Bum, 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 bum. Yes, I must go prepare. Yeah, something tells me this is gonna be a night to remember. The party has arrived. Oh, where? It's us, Hannah, he means us. Exactly, my good man, as in we're the life of the party. I can't believe you actually talked me into this. First order of business, we've gotta get you a birthday drink. I'll buy the first round. On his birthday? Any bartender with a heart would give him a free drink to start the night off, don't you think? Okay, free drinks are something that happens when you're a woman, dumbass. <laughs> are we gonna get into the gender politics section of the Choices series? Even on my 21st birthday, I didn't get so much as a free drop from anyone. No? Well, let me see what I can do. Come on, Drake. You pull Drake over to the bar with you. Hey, bartender, my friend here is celebrating his birthday. Can we get a drink on the house? The bartender thinks it over and nods. It's like everything I know is wrong. Yes, Drake. Everything you know is wrong. Good of you to admit it. Drake snaps his fingers. <laughs> These cats are cooking. No. Wait, I figured it out. Of course he'll do it for you. No one says no to a hot girl. You think I'm a hot girl? Ah, this is so uh, ridiculous. I told him this for you. Maybe he thinks you're hot. I've been told I'm quite a catch, but in my experience, guys don't get free drinks. Until today. Yeah, yeah, so what am I having? What do you make Drake drink? Something on fire, a fruity drink, or whiskey? I mean, it's his birthday, so really he should get to pick what he wants to drink. Um, but if I have to do it, I'll make him drink something on fire. Really? You want me to drink that? Yeah, if you're not afraid. Why would I possibly be afraid of fire? The element that burns and inflicts pain. You can blow it out first, I guess, if you want to take the easy way out. Drake glares at you and downs it. See, exactly. You survived. Not even singed. There you two are. Prince B. Davison just paid the guy operating the manacle bull. He wants Drake to ride. Me? No way. I figured he wouldn't want to, but Pete Davidson says you're some kind of expert. Is that true? There's only one way to find out, and I'm not drunk enough to make a fool of myself yet. Personally, I'd rather see Hannah try. Yes! Hannah and Maxwell. Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Yeah, that's why it'd be fun. Okay, tiebreaker vote. Dumbass. Hannah or Drake? Let's go with Hannah. Really? I don't think I'd be any good at it at all. That's why I picked you. <laughs> Maybe that's exactly why you should try it. It's okay to be terrible at something every now and then. In fact, it's kind of liberating. Well, okay, I'll do it. Hannah swings her leg up over the mechanical bull and delicately adjusts her skirt. Yee-haw? The bull begins to buck and twist. Whoa! Good bull, nice bull. Hannah's flung to the side as the bull bucks mightily. As you help her to your feet, you can see you're laughing so hard you can barely breathe. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh goodness, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard. Glad you did it. Uh, definitely. As the piano begins to play a new song, Maxwell's eyes light up. We should hit the dance floor. Drake's favorite thing to do. I don't think you can waltz to this. Yeah, exactly the point. I mean, really dance. Like, the fun kind of dancing. Drake heads to the dance floor, the rest of the group following closely behind. Who do I want to dance with? I dance with Pete. Come on now. Stepping out onto the dance floor, you take Prince B. Davidson's hand in yours. Lady dumbass. We're not at some royal courtly function. It's just dumbass right now. You sway against the prince and notice him blushing. Pete Davidson, what could you possibly be thinking right now? Just how enjoyable it is to have you so close. The biggest issue in my relationship with Pete Davidson right now is his inability to communicate his feelings. Like I have to say anytime that I want to learn anything about him, or just like what's what's on his mind, what he's thinking about. I have to be the one to explicitly ask him for it. Like he won't just be like, hey, can I can I talk to you? Or even just like, hey, I'm so happy to be with you right now. Ugh, and it's stopped my screen recording. I'm pissed. That's funny. I was just thinking the same thing. The prince smiles as he puts a hand at your waist, happily holding you. Even in a crowded country bar, it's amazing how everyone else in the room seems to fall away when I look in your eyes. Like that scene in Pride and Prejudice. As the night continues, you and your friends dance. And this Hannah is the sprinkler. Oh, nice, Maxwell. Oh, do you have sprinkles? It's water, just forget it. And dance. Pete Davidson, get in the middle of the circle and show us a move. I couldn't possibly. Do it! Pete Davidson, Pete Davidson, Pete Davidson, very well if it'll avoid causing a scene. Pete Davidson claps and backing up a few steps, runs forward and does a flip. <laughs> Whoa! 
I didn't know you had moves like that. As part of my education, my parents had me take a few years of gymnastics. I'm afraid that's more or less all I remember. It's enough. As the last song of the night winds down, your group gathers to leave. We shut this place down. What do you think, Hannah? This was scary, but a fun kind of scary? You'll learn to love going out. Just wait until next time. Next time? I hope there's a next time, as long as we can find another way to sneak out. As everyone heads to the door, you notice Drake hanging back. Not ready for your birthday to be over? Ha! <sighs> Maybe. You know, to tell you the truth, I always dreaded my birthday when I was a kid. My parents tried hard, really hard, to give me the best birthday they could, but I kind of always knew that no matter what they did, Prince B. Davidson's parents were going to top it. You know, the king and queen of a country? My parents got me a toy T-Rex? P. Davidson's parents got the entire palace staff to dress up like dinosaurs for his birthday. My parents got me a cake shaped like a car? P. Davidson's parents got him a cake the size of a car. That must have been hard. That must have stunk. I mean, sure, it wasn't easy, but I knew we were lucky to live at the palace and even be invited to Pete Davidson's birthdays, so I didn't really care about that stuff. Never saw these birthday parties as a competition, but they were hell on my parents. They knew they could never even come close to what my best friend was getting, and that killed them. So around when I was 9 or 10, I made a decision to stop trying. No more birthday parties, no more cakes, no more presents. All I wanted was to spend the day with my family doing something fun. My parents loved it, made them feel like they could really give me something special. Yeah, yeah, I'm a total marshmallow, just don't tell anyone else. No promises, but... But? Drake, I hope I didn't get in the way of any family traditions tonight. Nah, my family's not here anymore, so I wasn't expecting to do anything tonight. Anyway, tonight's been... It's been really fun. And if I'm being honest with myself, it's felt a lot more like those special birthdays with my family than I thought it could. I'm happy you're happy. Drake stares at you for one long moment. This is you happy, right? About as happy as I get. Anyway, we should call it a night. I'll give him a hug. I'm here for you anytime. Peckerwood. Yes, thanks. No, it wasn't a romantic hug. Oh my goodness. The next morning, you hear Bridget and Maxwell calling you from the hallway. Rise and shine, little blossom. Don't ever... Don't ever call me that again. Day two of the Apple Blossom Festival. I always want to call it the Apple Bottom Festival. I hope you're prepared to fight for your time with the prince, dumbass. And for all the apples. You've made an apple pie before, right? And you're pretty good at planting apple trees? Hold on. Okay, I guess like as part of the tradition, you plant seeds of new trees that are gonna grow. Are they gonna judge me on my ability to plant an apple tree? What are they gonna judge? It's not gonna be a tree for so long. Will you impress or fall flat in the conclusion of Cordonia's Apple Blossom Festival? Find out in the next chapter. Chapter 12, as sweet as apple pie. It's the second day of the Apple Blossom Festival. As you leave the manor, Bertrand finds you. Dumbass, there you are. I'm here to prepare you for today's events at the Apple Blossom Festival. <gasps> I'm here to prepare you for the day's events at the Apple Blossom Festival. Way ahead of you. I ate an apple tart for breakfast with apple cider and whipped apple butter so I think I'm as ready as I can be. I don't care about your food consumption. I care about how you're going to appear today. And you should care too. The best dressed lady will be crowned the Apple Queen. Ooh, what's that? It's this amazing tradition. You ever seen Midsummer? It's exactly like that, except the crown at the end is made of apples, not flowers. It's an amusing tradition where the festival goers vote on who will run the apple court. You'd get extra publicity, the favor of the actual queen, and the ability to boss people around for an hour. Interesting, the best dressed, huh? Something tells me you've got an outfit in mind? Through a series of promises and threats, I was able to procure a historically accurate rendition of a Cordonian peasant's best gown from the country's most prestigious stage production company, available on consignment. With this dress, you're sure to be the title of Apple Queen. The peasant outfit will earn the admiration of the attendees. Okay, so if I get it, I just become the Apple Queen? I look great. Yeah, I do. You're sure it's not too silly? It's perfect. You can thank me later. Come on, we're overdue to meet Maxwell. As you and Bertrand approach the apple orchard, you spot Maxwell. Hey, dumbass, ready to show off your baking skills? I can toast my own Pop-Tarts. Two at a time. Even a child can accomplish I I know, Bertrand, it's a joke. But why would my baking skills matter out here in the orchard? Because the next event of the Apple Blossom Festival involves baking an apple pie for the queen. I've seen waitress. Sugar butter flour. All right, that's all I need. Today's all about gaining the queen's favor. As we draw closer to the coronation, she'll be testing all the potential candidates. Be careful what you say around her. It'll also help if you won the pie baking contest. Roger that. But you won't be baking alone. It's a team event, so you can rely on the other ladies if you need to. Some of them are absolutely amazing bakers. I'm sure Hannah could whip up an apple pie even if she was blindfolded. Maybe you can get her on the team. Maxwell directs you to where the ladies gather for the Royal Bake Off. Make House Beaumont proud! Maxwell and Bertrand walk off, leaving you with the ladies. Moments later, Queen Regina enters. Greetings, ladies. I'm glad to see everyone here again. We will be dividing into two teams to partake in the apple pie baking contest. I've decided that Olivia will captain one team and Madeline the other. Ladies, 
Please select your teams. I choose Penelope. Lady Kiara. Until the only two left are you and Hannah. Oh, look at the two strays. Come on, dumbass. I'll adopt you. You're not as mangy as Hannah. Wait, we're a pair. If you adopt one of us, you have to adopt both of us. Two undesirables on one team? That's just vile. I don't really care. You can have both of them. Hannah's with me. Let's go. Yes, I am. Let's go. As you walk towards the outdoor baking setup, the queen approaches you. Lady dumbass, I hope you'll exceed expectations like last time. Don't worry. I'll bake you something as American as apple pie. I imagine you've had some decent apple pies from your homeland. If you really want to do as American as apple pie, we should do a slice of cheddar cheese on top. It's controversial. It'll get the people talking about something. Though I expect that after today, you'll be saying as Cordonian as apple pie. I know I sure will. How good are your pies supposed to be? World renowned. Best of luck, lady dumbass. You're going to need it. As the ladies arrive at the outdoor kitchen, Olivia and Madeline organize their teams. Dumbass, Hannah, cut the apples. That should be a simple enough task that even you can handle. But I... Olivia walks away before Hannah can even finish. I appreciate your chef skills, Hannah. We got this. With ladies all positioned, Queen Regina adjusts the crowd. Let the great Cordonian Bake Off begin! The ladies jump into a flurry of activity. Olivia slams a basket of apples in front of you. Get to work! You and Hannah quickly peel and slice the apples. Anyway... That's done. Let's see, the recipe says we should add two cups of sliced apples, but we're doubling the size of the pie, so we should add four cups. Great, I'll do the measuring. Okay, I'll start getting the spices together. You take the cut apples and turn to the mixing bowl. I should add four cups. You measure four cups worth of apples and set aside the cinnamon mix. That looks perfect. Thanks, I'll tell Olivia we've done our job. Hey, Olivia, yo, baking skill up by measuring out four cups of apples? Let's go. You find Olivia near the other team's kitchen. She hides two identical shakers behind her back as you approach. The apples are ready. Oh, uh, good. What are you doing? Official captain business. Right. What are you really doing? Olivia checks around for eavesdroppers before whispering to you. I'm switching the salt and sugar labels for the other team. Now that you know, you can spare me your moralizing and leave. I don't have much time. How can I help? You want to help me? I, we're going to fucking win, all right? How about you distract Penelope for me? She's our guard dog. On it, Olivia ducks down to switch the labels. Standing guard, you stop Penelope as she returns to the cabinet. Penelope, my dearest friend, how goes the pie baking? Madeline doesn't trust me, so I'm standing around and looking pretty. But, you know, at least that means she thinks I'm pretty. But you're so good at baking and things presumably if only i've never even boiled water right now i just wish i could snuggle up with my poodle yeah i feel that do you have poodles they're my favorite type of dogs did i tell you about the golden poodle statues around my family's estate we have one in the atrium the gardens the boat what house. have i gotten myself into an interesting conversation for once a hand pats your shoulder penelope darling excuse me butting in but this little sheep has wandered from the herd i'll be taking her back now of course Goodbye. Olivia leads you back to the team's kitchen. Not bad for a beginner, but now I need you over by the oven. Olivia leads you to a wood-fired oven. Hannah waves and comes over. The pie is almost ready to be baked. Want to help me decorate it before it goes in the oven? Does this include a taste test? There is leftover apple pie filling. Consider me at your command. I want to add a little flair to the pie, so I'll bake with a pretty design. Though I'm not sure what the design should be. What do you think the queen would like? Not a big heart. That's the wrong answer. A flurry of roses? I think that's what we go with. Because, yeah, it, it's cool. It's classy. Uh, the, like the Cordonian seal seems like a little brown nosy. Hannah toes away at the dough, forming several outlines of roses. Wow, you're really amazing at this. You sound so surprised. I mean, just... I'm very impressed. Kiara discovers you two decorating the crust. Hey, you're not supposed to... Wow. Trebo. <laughs> oh, wait, no, she doesn't say wow. She goes, whoa. Trepo. You think the queen will like it? Uh, she'd be a fool not to. Let's bake this masterpiece. Kiara takes the freshly decorated pie and puts it in the oven. One pie coming right up. Kiara trips, sending the pie flipping through the air. I should catch the pie. You dive after the pie, catching it before it hits the ground. Baking up. <laughs> wow, that was spectacular. As you wait for the pie to cook, you and Hannah take a break. You sip on water while enjoying the warmth of the sun filtering through the apple trees. So Hannah, let me guess. Baking is another one of those skills you had to learn. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, as my mother used to say. But at least I got to taste test all my creations, including sneaking in some uncooked batter every now and then. As is the chef's right. Ding! That's the oven timer. That's all the time we had to talk. Looks like the pie's done. You pull it out of the oven. Hot, hot, hot. Give that here! Olivia smoothly takes the pie from you and presents it to Queen Regina at the same time that Madeline presents her team's pie. Thank you both. We'll begin the judging with Madeline's pie. She examines the quality of the pie's presentation. This is very well done. Good work, Madeline. Thank you, ma'am. Queen Regina cuts out a piece and bites into it. Oh my. It's a bit heavy on the salt. Uh? Olivia nudges you and whispers. Good work. 
Madeline's fists clench in rage as she glowers at Penelope. My apologies, your majesty. The queen shifts her attention to your team's pie. The design is amazing. Who did this? It was Hannah. I did, your majesty. You're exceptionally talented, Lady Hannah. Thank you, ma'am. But I had help from Lady Dumbass. I picked the pattern. Let me extend my compliments to both of you. And the crust is in splendid condition. Queen Regina cuts into the pie and samples a small bite. The perfect amount of apples with exquisite flavoring. Thank you, ma'am. The queen dabs her mouth with a napkin. After weighing the strengths and weaknesses of each side, I declare Olivia seemed the winner. This is one of the best apple pies I've had in a long time. Very well done, ladies. You honor us all, ma'am. Now, ladies, if you'll proceed across the grounds for our next event. Cleaning staff clear the area as you walk away from the other ladies. Queen Regina approaches you. Lady Dumbass, may I have a word? Of course, ma'am. She leads you away from the ladies for a stroll through the apple orchard. First, I'd like to compliment you on your historically accurate costume. It's nice to see you embracing our traditions. Hey, thank you. I suspect this isn't what you took me on this walk to talk about, though, is it? Ah, you're direct, but not incorrect. I wanted us to get to know one another better. I've been impressed with how you've comported yourself so far. You've demonstrated grace and composure, unlike most. Thank you, ma'am. But a queen! No matter how graceful and composed, cannot be everywhere at once. You'll need to appoint advisors and ambassadors to act in your stead. Effective delegation is effective leadership. Precisely. That's why I'd like to hear your opinion on some of those around you. Madeline is one of your strongest competitors. What's your opinion of her? She's incredibly valuable. She has the pedigree and skills to thrive at court, and she uses that to her advantage. She could be a valuable ally or a difficult enemy. Interesting assessment. Hannah's been a competitor since the beginning, and you two seem closer than the others. What do you see in her? You said it yourself. She's extraordinarily talented. She's basically a court prodigy, and she's helped me find my footing when I didn't know where to step. So she's someone you'd keep in your inner circle, I'm assuming. Oh, absolutely. I've had a similar thought about her myself. What you can say about your friends can reveal more about you than about them. And Prince P. Davidson's commoner friend, Drake? You're by his side quite often, despite him having little to do with the competition. Drake's reliable. If rough around the edges he can be moody but he'll come through for his friends in a pinch he's loyal and i understand why prince b davidson trusts him it's good to surround yourself with people you can trust a true queen must have a network of allies she can call upon it's clear you've been assessing how those around you may help you one day i do my best you may return with the other suitors lady dumbass it's time to announce the next event of course Thank you, ma'am. You curtsy and rejoin the other ladies among a gathering crowd of onlookers. The queen addresses everyone. The Apple Blossom Festival symbolizes the growth vital to keeping our small nation thriving. Now, as is tradition, we will honor one distinguished best dressed lady as this year's Apple Queen. This is a ceremonial position for the people to decide. Last year, it was our very own Lady Madeline. And I very much appreciated the honor. As for this year, citizens of Cordonia, who do you wish to honor with the title? The crowd erupts into wild cries, a frenzied mix of names, cheers, and boos. Dumbass! Dumbass! Chance of dumbass overpower any dissenting names. I think we have a clear winner. Lady Dumbass will be this year's Apple Queen. Breaking news, folks. Lady Dumbass has been elected Apple Queen. What will this mean for the race to win Pete Davidson's hand? Our expert panel will weigh in shortly. Stay tuned. A whole expert panel? Woo, go Dumbass. Party like it's $12.99. Party like most people are gonna die in childbirth. All hail the Apple Queen from the Big Apple. Lady Dumbass, please join me for your coronation. You stand before the Queen. She hands you an apple-shaped scepter. <laughs> this is like the exact kind of hokey small country shit I wanted us to be getting into. I'm glad it's finally here. Lady Dumbass, I pronounce you Queen of the Apples. Long live the Apple Queen. Queen Regina, it is an honor. Thank you all for electing me to represent you as the Apple Queen. I'm happy to accept this esteemed position and I will treat it with the utmost respect. What now? My Queen, I will serve as your acting well, that's a new word. Seneschal. I will serve as your acting seneschal and guide you through the ceremony. Before we proceed, we must fill out the apple court. These are courtiers who will parade behind you. Who will be your cupbearer? This person should be a close confidant who you trust with your life. Who is my close confidant? Probably Hannah. I humbly accept this position, my queen. Hannah takes your place at your right-hand side. The queen pulls out a goofy-looking fool's cap. Your court jester. Oh, I can't make Pete Davidson the court jester. That's frustrating. I won't do it to, to Drake. I'll do it to, to Maxwell. Step aside, plebeian. Three-time Jester MVP. Yeah, okay. I figured he'd be a court Jester. You're not supposed to enjoy this. I'm sensing jealousy. Forget I said anything. Maxwell plops the Jester cap on his head. The bells jingle as they fall down his face. My queen, with your court assembled of only two, it is your right to issue an edict before your people. You turn to the crowd. My people, thank you for selecting me as your Apple Queen. I'm here because of you, and I'll be your faithful Apple Queen, the Apple Queen of the people. Woo! Queen Regina summons a horse pulling a wagon of apples. Yes! More horse dialogue. <sighs> oh, magnanimous Apple Queen. Please show your generosity and share a bountiful harvest with us. Did I mention apples for everyone? 
you get an apple and you get an apple. Everyone gets an apple. This would have killed in like 2012. You climb on the wagon with your court and parade past the crowd. Your courtiers hand you apples, which you then toss to the flood of clamoring hands. Toward the end of the line, you see Drake among the crowd and you throw an apple to him. It thuds into his chest and he scrambles to catch it. Whoa, Peckerwood, what was that for? You displease me and you shall be made an example of. But never forget the Apple Queen's justice is sweet and swift. You gift apples all the way down the parade line. At the end, Madeline stands by a potted baby apple tree. Your majesty, please honor your ancestor, last year's Apple Queen, and plant a tree for the next generation. Madeline curtsies as you approach. My queen, happy wishes for you, my ancestor. Thank you. The labor of your forebears will help you build a better world. Madeline lowers her voice and continues. Not many get the pleasure of being addressed as my queen. Save these moments. You may never hear the phrase again. Madeline, I take nothing for granted. Surprisingly level-headed. Maybe being a commoner has taught you to accept your station. It taught me to appreciate the little things and not to be an utter jerk. Good. I like complacency in a future subject. Madeline smirks and steps back to reveal a hole for the sapling. The ground is yours, my queen. You take the baby apple tree from the pot and place it into the hole and scoop the dirt around it. The work we do today will benefit future generations. They deserve something worth inheriting. The crowd claps. Thank you, gracious apple queen. As for your final honor, Pete Davidson kneels before you. You're entitled to a kiss, my queen. Pete Davidson, get up here and kiss me. As my queen commands. Pete Davidson rises. He tenderly leans in and kisses you on the cheek. On the cheek, with the tree planted and the kiss received, the crowd disperses. It's time to head back to the Applewood Manor, but please feel free to enjoy the festival as reigning Apple Queen. Past queens have been popular at the Apple Bobbing Contest. Thank you, ma'am. Before you can get too far, Maxwell breaks through the crowd and waves over to you. There's our glorious Apple Queen. Thanks for your support. I heard you cheering out there. Well, somebody had to do it, but anyway, that's not why I'm here. I might be able to get you some time alone with Pete Davidson today. I happen to know he's in the Manor's Conservatory right now waiting for a few nobles. I could distract them long enough with offers to donate to their favorite causes. This could be your chance for a romantic moment alone with him. Yep, that'd be amazing. Let's do it. The conservatory's on the other side of the estate's grounds. I'll take care of the rest. Thanks, Maxwell. You're the best. Well, someone needs to think I'm the best to make up for Bertrand thinking I'm the worst. As you step into the conservatory, Prince B. Davidson turns to you. Lady dumbass, what an unexpected surprise. And are you wearing an authentic peasant costume? Bertrand says it's historically accurate. Well, you look fantastic. Thank you. I hope I'm not disrupting your schedule too much. I am supposed to meet with some of my mother's friends to discuss the flowers, but I'm very excited to see you instead. You've been even busier than usual lately. Since my father announced his abdication at the regatta, I've been suddenly overrun by nobles wanting to, well, congratulate isn't the right word, but they want to spend a few moments with the soon-to-be king. My coronation seemed like a distant future event, but now it's actually happening. In a couple of weeks, I'll be king of Cordonia. I thought I'd have more time. You're ready. You've been training for this for so long, if anybody's ready for it, it's you. You say it so certainly, you make me believe you. You should, I'm usually always right. It's just strange to think that so many people would be counting on me, depending on me. I don't think they could be in better hands. You may not be able to see yourself clearly, but I do. You're kind, compassionate, and responsible to a fault. But most of all, you're always acting kingly. If Cordonia can count on anyone to uphold the name, it's you. We've had times of turmoil before. It's always been difficult for Cordonia to recover. You're way too responsible to let anything bad happen to Cordonia. And that's why it's so important that you're going to be king. You see me so clearly, but what about yourself? I know there's still so much undecided, but let's say you were my selection. You're such a free spirit, dumbass, and I love that about you. But there are expectations that come with being queen. Royal events, life of the palace, children. Do you see your place at my side? P. Davidson, I can't wait for my adventure with you to start. As long as I'm with you, I'm ready for anything. Meeting you in New York was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. You changed my life. Well, you changed mine too, Pete. I've gone from waiting tables to waltzing with a prince. My life has changed too, thanks to you. For better, I hope? Incomparably. Dumbass, whatever happens, know that I'm grateful for the time we spent together. P. Davidson pauses in front of a light pink flowering bush. Reaching out, he picks a rose and hands it to you. Have you ever seen a Juliet rose? Also known as the $5 million flower? Oh, please tell me this did not cost that much. Not quite. Okay. It's rumored that the man who created this specific peach colored rose spent 15 years and $5 million to do so. That's way too much trouble for a flower. I mean, is pale peach really $5 million better than pink? Does seem a bit silly, doesn't it? Thank you for showing it to me. Something after all, today is all about blossoms. I hope you enjoyed the festival. You know, you guys are way too obsessed with apples, but I loved it. I've never seen so many apples in my life. The festival is one of Cordonia's many little charms. Pete Davidson's gaze lingers on you. Well, I don't know how much longer Max will consult the nobles. He can't entertain all of my appointments. He could try. I should kiss him. You press your lips into Pete Davidson's, your arms going around his neck as his hands tighten around you. For a moment, you meet in a searing kiss that leaves you wanting more. Mmm, dumbass. His hands trail down your arms and your waist his mouth moving from yours to sensitive places down your neck. Oh, Pete Davidson, we better stop or I'll never leave you. Is that so bad? He captures your lips in one long lingering kiss, then reluctantly pulls away. 
tucking a strand of hair behind your ear. Until next time. Reluctantly, you walk out the door. You pause and look back as Pete Davidson holds your gaze to the glass. Clandestine Rendezvous. Oh, that's a saucy title. Walking back from the conservatory, you spot Maxwell waiting by the door of the manor. I hope everything went well with Pete Davidson, but we're switching gears for the next event. Now that the Apple Blossom Festival is episode... Sometimes I make mistakes in what I'm saying when I'm reading it, and that's understandable, but normally I'll go back and reread it. That's why there's cuts in the videos. But now that the Apple Blossom Festival is episode, sounds good to me. Jesus Christ. We're clearing the grounds for the fox hunt next week. We're hunting foxes? Not a fox hunt, a fox hunt. Didn't you see my air quotes the first time? No, because I didn't do them. I didn't, so the audience did not see them, Maxwell. It's more like a race that takes place on the royal hunting grounds, which means horseback riding through the woods. Uh, that could be romantic. Will you capture the prince's heart at the annual fox hunt? Find out in the next chapter. And find out we will. I think this will be fun. <laughs> the next episode in two months? I think it'll be a good time. Truly, I think Olivia is like no threat at all. It's, it's Madeline. Olivia lets her, like, her bitter side get the best of her sometimes. Whereas Madeline is incredibly cold and calculated. So I, she's like the real one to worry about. But I, I, I think I'm going to be okay. I think I might be able to capture the, the prince's heart. Big fan of, you know, him being on his knees in front of me. There's a couple of statues that come to mind. Again, if you want to relive the magic thus far, it's a playlist. I really, like, am glad that I've come around on some of the characters because I remember in the first episode, I was like, Maxwell, this dweeb ass dude. But now, now he's cool. I like him. I'm a big fan. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like or subscribing, I'd really appreciate that too. Learned a new word today. Did not know Seneschal meant a steward or major domo of a medieval great house. Yeah, use over time way down, but we're bringing it back. We're bringing Shenisal back. Shenisal? I'm already saying it wrong. So it's not coming back. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.